Hello friends, welcome to Study Track. In this video, you will find some important questions of geography for NTSC Stage One SAT paper. This video will cover some important topics of geography, out of which many important questions are discussed. So watch the video till end. We'll begin with the first aspect of geography, that is location of India. India, which is the seventh largest country and the second most populous country of the world, accounting for about 2.4% of the total world area and 15% of the total world people, has an area of 3.28 billion square kilometer. It lies in the northern hemisphere. It lies between latitude 8 degree 4 minutes north and 37 degree 6 minutes north and longitude 68 degree 7 minutes east and 97 degree 25 minutes east. The distance from north to south latitude is 3,214 km and from east to west longitude is 2,933 km. Its coastline is 7,516.6 km long including Andaman and Nicobar and Lakshmi Islands. The total length of land frontier is 15,200 km. It is bordered by Pakistan and Afghanistan to the northwest, China, Nepal and Bhutan to the north, Bangladesh and Myanmar to the east, and India occupies an important strategic position in South Asia. According to latest changes, India has 28 states and 9 union territories. The countries larger than India are Russia, Canada, China, USA, Brazil and Australia. The southernmost point of Indian Union is Kanyakumari. With the opening of Suez Canal in 1869, has caused India's distance from Europe to be reduced by 7,000 km. Tropic of Cancer passes through the states of Gujarat, Rajasthan, Mahar Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, Jharkhand, West Bengal, Tripura, and Mizoram. The longitude 82 degree 30 minutes east passing through Mizapur is considered as the standard meridian of India. Friends, after learning about the location of India, now let's move on to the physical features of India. Physical divisions of India can be grouped into the Northern Mountains, Northern Indo-Gangetic Plains, Peninsular Plateau, Indian Desert, Coastal Plains and Islands. Himalayas, the Northern Mountains, form the Northern Frontiers in the form of huge mountain wall, about 3600 km long, comprising snow-capped mountains, ranges of Karakoram and the Himalayas. Its width varied between 150 km and 400 kilometers. It is broadly divided into Western Himalayas, which encompasses Jammu and Kashmir and Himachal Pradesh, Central Himalayas, which spreads over Uttarakhand and Nepal, Eastern Himalayas, which moves from northern parts from West Bengal and Sikkim, Bhutan and Arunachal Pradesh. There are three parallel ranges of Himalayas. They are Himadri, Himachal and Shivalik. In Himadri, the world's highest peaks like Mount Everest in Nepal, Kanchanjanga in India, Nanga Parvat, Nanda Devi, etc. are situated. Himachal Range is famous for its hill stations like Kashmir, Kullu, Kangra, Shimla, Masuri, Nenital, etc. are located. Shivalik Range, whose highest uh, height is about 900 meters to 1200 meters from sea level, is made up of mud and soft rocks. Himalayas are of recent origin and they are young fold mountains. Now let's move on to the second physical division of India that is Great Northern Plains which consists of Indus Basin, Ganga Basin, Brahmaputra Basin and its tributaries. It is very fertile and good for agriculture and industries. We find a water divide made up of low narrow ridge of Aravali range passing through Delhi and Ambala in this. Let's talk about the third physical division that is Peninsular Plateau. It lies to the south of Great Plains. It is the oldest landmass made up of metamorphic rocks. It has two parts, Malva Plateau and Deccan Plateau. Malva Plateau, its northernmost part, Chota Nagpur Plateau, is the richest mineral producing region of India. Deccan Plateau extends from Satpura Hills in the north to Kanyakumari in the south. Kanyakumari is the southernmost tip of India. It has western guards in the western edge and the plateau with Sahyadri, Nilgiri, Annamalai and Cardamom Hills. Naimudi Peak in Kerala is the highest peak of Peninsular Plateau, which is 2,695 meters above sea level. Eastern edge is called as Eastern Ghats. Mahindagiri is the highest peak of Eastern Ghats. 
all the rivers of Deccan Plateau, Mahanadi, Godavari, which is the longest southern river and also called as Dakshin Ganga, Krishna and Kaveri flows from west to east. Only Narmada and Tapi are the two rivers which fall into Arabian Sea and they flow from east to west. Yes, we have great Indian deserts which lie in the northwest of Malwa Plateau made up of sand. It is an arid climate. It is only one river, Luni River, which drains off into run of Kutch. After this, we have two narrow coastal plains along Deccan Plateau known as Malabar Coast and Konkan Coast in west and Koromandal Coast and Northern Sirkar in east. Andaman Nicobar Island groups are located in Bay of Bengal. They are a chain of islands. They are of volcanic in origin. These island groups are far away from mainland. Their administrative unit is Port Blair. Lakshadweep Island is located in Arabian Sea. They are formed because of coral deposits. Lakshadweep is a cluster of islands. This island group is closer to the mainland and their administrative unit is Kawarati. India's climate is subtropical in nature. The physiography of India plays a major role in determining the climate of India. The Himalayas do not allow the cold winds from central India to enter India, neither do they allow the monsoon winds to cross India, so relief also helps in orographic rainfall in many parts of the country. We have hot weather season which starts uh, from March to May and cold weather season stays in India from mid-November till February. Now let's move on to the another section that is resources of India. All those natural elements become resource when man modifies them to be more useful and valuable to fulfill his needs with the help of his intelligence, skill and technical knowledge. Resource conservation is very important because resources are very limited and we are using it in a very great speed so one day they will exhaust. It is very important for us to adopt the sustainable development means saving the resources for future generation and using the resources in such a way that it should not harm environment. This philosophy was adopted in Agenda 21 in the Rio de Janeiro summit which was held in 1992 in Brazil. Let's talk about the type of soil cover available in India. First is the alluvial soil which is the most abundant soil. It is deficient in nitrogen, phosphorus and humus but it is very fertile and rich in potash and lime. It Three major rivers of India, Satluj, Ganga and Brahmaputra originating from Himalayas and their tributaries transport this soil in India. It consists of very fine particles which are deposited in the delta region of these rivers and the soil consists of fine sand, clay and loamy particles. See that this is found in Punjab, Haryana, Uttar Pradesh, Uttarakhand, Bihar, West Bengal, Assam, Meghalaya and North Eastern Rajasthan. Also found in the delta region of Godavari, Krishna, Kaveri, Eastern and Western Coastal Plains. Second important soil is the Regur or Black Soil which is also used for cotton production. It is dark black in color and made up of finely grained particles. They retain moisture for longer types and they are generally deficient in nitrogen, phosphorus and humus but rich in potash, lime, magnesium, aluminium and iron. Found in Maharashtra, Maratwara, Madhya Pradesh, southern part of Odisha, north district of Karnataka, southern and western areas of Andhra Pradesh, Tamil Nadu, Uttar Pradesh and it is suitable for cotton and cereals. Next is the red soil which is derived by the disintegration of crystalline and metamorphic rocks in dry and wet climate. It is found in Bundelkhand, Uttar Pradesh to Southern Peninsula in Madhya Pradesh, Jharkhand, West Bengal, Meghalaya, Nagaland, Uttar Pradesh, Rajasthan, Tamil Nadu and Maharashtra. Bajra crop is grown in this soil but it is dark red color due to diffusion of iron. Laterite soil is found in the regions which have dry and wet seasons by turn. It is formed due to the disintegration of laterite rocks. It is found in the lower regions and hilly regions of Tamil Nadu and Karnataka, Kerala and Maharashtra. Soil is found in Rajasthan and mountainous soil is found in mountainous regions. Soil conservation is very important. Contour forming is done in mountainous season for preventing soil erosion. To check gully erosion, field ridges can be made for preventing of soil erosion. Planting of trees can also be done by collecting the running water in mountain slopes and uneven areas and by developing grazing lands in the rural areas. Let's talk about the forest and wildlife resources of India. 
India is immensely rich in wildlife and cultivated species diverse in forms and function it has 47000 plant species and 89000 species of animals India is 10th in the world and 4th in Asia in plant diversity when we talk of forest cover we have tropical rain forest tropical deciduous forest which includes moist deciduous and dry deciduous mountain forest thorn forest and mangrove forests tropical rain or evergreen forests are found in western ghats island groups of andaman and nicobar islands parts of assam and tamil nadu it is found in heavy rainfall areas it includes ebony mahogany rosewood rubber and cinchona trees tropical deciduous forests which are also known as monsoon forests are found in the areas which are receiving rainfall between 200 to 100 cm this includes moist deciduous forests which covers the regions of northeastern states along the foothills of himalayas jharkhand west orissa chatisgarh and eastern slopes of western ghat teak is the most important tree in this dry deciduous found in the areas having rainfall between 100 to 70 cm it is found in the plains of bihar and uttar pradesh the flora is teak sal people and neem mountain forests are found in high altitude mountainous areas of temperature decreases with increasing latitude it includes wet temperate forest temperate forest and grasslands and alpine vegetation thorn forests and scrubs are found in northwestern parts of country including semi arid regions of gujarat rajasthan madhya pradesh chatisgarh uttar pradesh and haryana rainfall in this region is less than 70 cm flora is babul euphorbia and cactus mangrove forest known as tidal forest found in the areas of coast influenced by tides deltas of ganga pramputra mahanadi krishna godavari ka very dense mangroves with roots and plants submerged under water are common sundari provided durable and hard timber palm coconut kiara and agar are the important flora of this type Order to protect the forest new forest policy was first made in 1988 and then it was revised in 1990 according to this there was establishment of central forest commission indian forest survey organization council of forestry research and education was established in dehradun for research work establishment of woodcraft training sector was done in 1965 in dehradun and state forest development corporations were set up in 19 states and indian institute of forest management was established in Ahmedabad in 1978 and Forest Conservation Act in 1980 was passed. According to this, the protection was done. Then one mahotsav was started by K. Munshi in 1950. Social forestry program was also started with the help of World Bank. And one tree for one child. This slogan was developed in schools and colleges. publicizing one mahotsav joint forest management program was also started in 35000 villages by various forest protection committee leaf protection act was implemented in 1972 in india we have various national parks wildlife sanctuaries bird sanctuaries and biosphere reserves world network of biosphere reserves four biosphere reserves which are part of world network of biosphere reserves are sundarbans in western bengal nanda devi in uttarakhand gulf of mannar in tamil nadu and neel giris in kerala karnataka and tamil nadu this map gives you an account of the national parks and wildlife sanctuaries and bird sanctuaries in india so have a close look at it so all these we have covered up in this video Now in the next video of geography you will find mineral resources about the population about the largest and small states of India about the conventional and non conventional sources of energy transportation agriculture and the census of India will be discussed in the next video so subscribe our channel and keep watching study track